you're on. One second. Greetings, unsettled souls. Sam I.B. DeGangi doing political commentary for the media speaks. You might know me from Wits News. You might know me from Blasting News. You might not know me to do a lot of fundraisers when I first opened the show. And I'll tell you why I'm going to do it now. First of all, it ties into the whole radiation issue that we're talking about every month here. Um, and how it affects generationally, that this isn't just a problem that we have for a moment or that we have right now. This is a problem that we're going to have for billions of years in the cases of uh, uranium or plutonium, which, uh, which tend to have a half-life of unbelievably long lengths of time. And they are cancerous, and they lead to things that have real-world consequences. Such as this. I am going to move the camera for one second and then have to put it back here. That is Joe and his wonderful family. Now, the man, and I'm not saying it's from Fukushima. I'm not saying it's from that particular nuclear accident. But um, his fundraiser here at GoFundMe, look up Harris Family Support. His name is Joe Harris. Stage name was Joe Blaze. I know him as a guitar player from the band Vicious Strike. Um, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. He's unable to work. He's had surgery. They're like Frankenstein stitches that they put into his head. They're, they're literally massive in size. And I remember when I was a kid, my dad was a nurse, an LPN. And I, I've read everything I could get my hands on as a child. I just always did. I'd sit on the bathroom and do it on number two and I'm reading the shampoo bottle. That's just me. Well, I remember one time I read about brain tumors and read about exactly what it is they did, just in his medical books that were in the basement. I was mortified. I'm not afraid of many things, my friends, not at all. This is something that really, really, you know, traumatized me. And he went through it like a trooper. He had staples in his head that they took out. And now science has come so far from back when, of course, those books were written. My dad... Uh, uh, my parents were married in 69. I think my dad became a nurse in 67, 68. So science has come so far since that that it almost looks like he didn't have anything done. But I do want to say exactly why this ties into radiation and all things nuclear. And then I promise, I promise, I promise I will get into the massive Fukushima update. But I think it's important that we do go ahead here and take a look at just what radiation does. My, this is what he wrote, my mother's father killed himself when he was in his 20s because he had pain and pressure in his brain. My mother was only two years old. He was in the military and was exposed to radiation at a few points and was, and has, it has basically created this genetic alteration that's led to me developing it. As far as I can show up, as, uh, and then he was asking what time he could get here, um, he said, basically, my grandfather had brain cancer from radioactive exposure in the military, and it's a genetic thing now, which means I have to watch myself and my kids our whole lives because it could grow at any point. It's kind of crazy. Do you understand what I'm getting at here, people? We've got, I, and I had these ridiculous people on my last posting, on my last timeline, that was sitting here telling me that cancers were not going to, well, first of all, that they're not going up in Japan when they're saying it's due to more testing. Lunacy, total lunacy. It is not normal for that high of a percentage of people to have uh, pre-thyroid tumors in their, in their, or precancerous tumors in their thyroid. That is not normal, okay? Genetic alterations, mutations, horrible things develop. And you know what? They, they come upon future generations who did nothing, like Joe, just trying to raise his kids here. So I want to ask everyone if you could please do this for me. I would really, really be appreciative to the maximum. It's on GoFundMe, Harris Family Support. Got 19 days left to get it done, friends. And I know a lot of people watch this Fukushima update. So do me a favor, everyone, and uh, let's help get this done because 
this he's not only a great musician, he's not only a great friend, but he's somebody who's had his life stolen from the nuclear industry. And if you go to his page at Joe Blaze on Facebook, he's in Canton, Ohio, I believe. Um, go ahead and go on his Facebook page. He lists what kind of cancer it is. He lists what it is caused by, and he has mounds of medical proof and scientific data from the medical establishment that's treating him, no less, as to what caused this. And again, I'm not saying it was, uh, it was Fukushima. It could have been, uh, you know, his father was repairing an x-ray machine. I highly doubt it, but you know what I mean, his grandfather. He was exposed to radiation while in the military, and it has created a problem that could, in theory, jeopardize those wonderful children that you saw in the picture. And who knows who else this is doing it to? Who knows? I mean, it, it thankfully is a rare cancer. But I wanted to put this out there for everybody who is saying that there are not somehow real world consequences to our mass apathy towards radiation, because there is, friends. There absolutely is. And with that, friends, I'm going to go ahead on to Tech Times and get into the massive Fukushima update. Nuclear fallout from Chernobyl and Fukushima disasters are stored in melting glaciers and are ticking time bombs. Again, it's Tech Times. I, have, I give sources on every show that I have ever done. And I had these ridiculous people on my comment line asking me what my sources were, which proved that they didn't listen to the show. So I've now made sure I put the link down because some people, yeah, they're just not all there. You know what I mean? All right, listen. Irradiated glaciers from glaciers, take two, from the Chernobyl and Fukushima nuclear disasters now threaten the environment as they could release their stored radiation particles at any moment. In a study presented by the European Geosciences Union's General Assembly, you don't give any sources. Hey, idiot. European Geoscientists, Geosciences Union's General Assembly. How's that for a source? Their researchers discuss how ice, flow, ice and flow in glaciated areas can capture fallout from nuclear accidents and store them for long periods of time. However, these glaciers are starting to melt at a rapid pace. They blame it on climate change. It's not climate. Well, it could be climate change from the sun, but man's not doing it. Anyway, climate change. Let's remember in other areas, there's more ice than there ever was before. Ships that go to study, it gets stuck. However, in this area, yes, the ice is melting. <coughs> they are now at risk of releasing their contaminants into the environment, which could be poisonous to humans. Now, I mention this because people like to believe in the sham of global warming being caused by man. And then what they do is they use that as an inroad to open up nuclear power plants because it's good for the environment. If this sounds like it's good for the environment, even if you don't support anything else that I'm saying, then you need to reevaluate what you think is good for the environment. Dr. Caroline Clayson, an expert on physical geography from the University of Plymouth in the United Kingdom, another source led an international team of researchers in examining the effects of nuclear radiation on glaciers. They focused their work on particles known as fallout radionuclides, which are the byproducts of nuclear weapons testings and accidents. These contaminants are often stored in ice surface sediments called criconite. Now, this is where we want to pause and mention that this is why this show is against all nuclear, but bomb testing on nuclear, anything that isn't for medicine, literally, because what we are seeing here are a compiling of problems to which people never dreamed possible. For instance, the way that many nuclear contaminants have been spread by birds in Fukushima and Chernobyl and areas like that. They hadn't really thought of it prior. This idea of radiation now being stored in glaciers, these are things that hadn't really been thought of prior. So I think, you know, I think it's important to notice. Uh, Clayson and her colleagues traveled to different sites around the world, such as Greenland, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, and Antarctica. The FRNs detected in these environments have orders of magnitude 
that are higher than those found in non-glaciated areas. The team's discovery underscores the role of glaciers, particularly the interaction between uh, Kraikonite and meltwater in collecting contaminants in the atmosphere for various human activities. The researchers also found and said that FRN buildup is not restricted to areas directly affected by nuclear activity, such as in Chernobyl and Fukushima. This highlights the impact of nuclear fallout and other atmospheric pollutants on the entire planet. So it's not just that you, you probably should not listen to the bunk science that implies that it's safe for you to move back into these areas, but it would be a very good idea to remember that we are dealing with issues, genies that can not only not be put back in the bottle, but which are spreading to areas that we thought they wouldn't and perhaps would wash away in somehow, or, or um, what is the, use they, the word they use? It would uh, dilute in the environment. It's not, it, it, particularly in these frozen tundra and uh, frigid areas, they are working like refrigerators for this. And on so, some of the particles, it doesn't matter because the half-life is millions or billions of years anyway. But for some of these that break down quicker, this could be quite a problem, not to mention for any life there would be greatly affected by this over time as it accumulates. And as this said, as um, the FRNs were orders of magnitude higher. So this is not a, uh, uh, just a passing thing that's going to go away. And if there wasn't melting, it would still be stored there. So at some point it would, you know, you would have to melt at some point, even if they weren't melting now, I should say. While high concentrations of FRNs have already been detected in the past, not much is known about how they could potentially impact the environment yet. This is something that Clayson and her colleagues have been trying to explore with research. Um, the effects of radiation exposure. High levels of radiation produced after a nuclear disaster can cause long-lasting effects on human health. Did you hear that, idiots on my comment line? Uh, the longer the body is exposed to the energy, the more cells and tissues are damaged. I don't mean that everybody on my comment line is an idiot. I mean that certain people are, and I'm not going to name them because I don't believe in giving bunk fake science a platform. Um, one of the most visible health effects of radiation is hair loss, alopecia, which often occurs when people are exposed to 200 rems or higher. The brain is also susceptible to damage from nuclear exposure. Now, what did we just talk about with uh, Joe? What did we just say? What were we just mentioning? Well, there's the science right here. Radiation with 5,000 REMs or higher can destroy small blood vessels and nerve cells, resulting in seizures and even immediate death in extreme cases. High amounts of radioactive iodine can seriously damage the thyroid. Oh, but he made it up. And other cells related to gland. However, when used properly and in controlled doses, radioiodine can help treat thyroid cancer. Again, small doses. It's like, you know, salt can be good for you. Having an entire salt shaker on your mashed potatoes is probably not good for you. People exposed to 100 grams of radiation may experience a lowering of the lycophyte cell counts. This leaves them vulnerable to various other infections. So, how many people have noticed all of these illnesses cropping up and down the West Coast that they're trying to say is, you know, these mystery illnesses? It's not a mystery illness. People are catching more infections because their immune system has been damaged by radiation coming over from the ongoing Fukushima disaster. This isn't rocket science. That's why people shouldn't live in California, on the coast, Oregon, Alaska, Hawaii. You shouldn't live there. And if that sounds extreme, it's not as extreme as building a nuclear power plant on a known tidal wave risk zone, which they did, and ignored all the science that it took to build it. That's General Electric for you. Data from Hiroshima and Nagasaki atomic bombings suggest that symptoms of this form of radiation sickness can last up to 10 years and can increase the risk of developing lymphoma and leukemia, which is cancer. 
Moving on, friends. Fukushima contaminants found as far north as Alaska's Bering Strait. CGTN News. Radioactive contamination from Japan's Fukushima nuclear disaster. From the pleur, take three. Radioactive contamination from Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant hit by a tsunami in 2011 has drifted as far north as the waters of remote Alaska, the island of the Bering Str- in the Bering Strait, scientists said on Wednesday. Analysis of seawater collected last year near St. Lawrence Island revealed a slight elevation of levels of radioactive cesium-137 attributable to the Fukushima disaster, the University of Alaska Fairbanks Sea Grant Program said. Now, how do they know it's from from Fukushima? Because of the way that the breakdown happens in the half-life. They could test the radioactive element to tell how old it is, and it rolls out it being from other sources. You can tell when the Fukushima disaster happened, and then you can tell through mathematics how old this particular sample of, in this case, cesium-137 is. <coughs> and before anybody says that this, isn't a, this is a safe level, there is no safe level of radiation. Repeat, there is no safe level of radiation. Don't give me this from a banana BS. There is no safe level of radiation when you're talking about these radionuclides. It simply isn't so. And that's backed up by Dr. Chris Busby, if you want another source. This is the northern edge of the plume, said Gay Sheffield, a Sea Grant Marine Advisory Agent based in Bering Sea Town of Nome, Alaska. The newly detected Fukushima radiation was minute. The level of cesium-137, a byproduct of nuclear fission, in seawater was just four-tenths as high as traces of the isotope naturally found in the Pacific Ocean. Those levels are far too low to pose a health concern. Now pause. They said it's important to people living in the area. The problem with that is that it bioaccumulates in the fish. It bioaccumulates in the environment itself. So it doesn't go away, it continues to get worse and worse. So while the levels are small now, as this disaster goes on, the number is going to continue to rise. And what happens? We know what happens when when you reach a point that science has already proven to be deadly. Well, then you just raise what they call safe, which is what Obama did, putting thousands of people at risk. Um... The results reported on Wednesday came after a long-term but small-scale testing program. And again, we need to wonder, too, what's going to happen if Fukushima... I mean, they already said it's going to be 40 to 45 years to get this plant under control, to get it actually shut down. Well, you might find a lot of higher levels of radiation in the Bering Strait, according to information found on the uh, New York Daily News. Earth crust may be peeling in two, maybe peeling in two off the coast of blah, blah. Earth crust may be peeling in two off the coast of Portugal, creating a new subduction zone. Take four is in full swing. Now, the reason this matters, friends, is so much of what's happening in the Pacific Ocean is being blamed on man-made climate change, which is just about as real as the tooth fairy on roller skates. Much of the problem, especially with activity that we're seeing, is due to the radiation and the poisoning caused from the Fukushima disaster, much of it being downplayed. And second of all, a lot of the inconsistencies with why we're seeing so much activity in that area could be tied to this. So listen, check this out. Let me go to screen share for my Media Speaks friends. The normally stable tectonic plate off the coast of Portugal may be shearing into two layers, according to new findings by geographical researchers. If true, this could put it on track to become the new subduction zone, where two tectonic plates run into each other. For Yeho Durante, a marine geologist from the Instituto Dom Luis at the University of Lisbon, it started in 1755 when an 8.7 magnitude earthquake leveled Lisbon and spawned a tsunami. 
Flash forward to 1969 when a 7.9 magnitude trembler rocked the same region. Both events are odd considering that they're happening in a place where the two tectonic plates meet and grind together. Durante wrote in a summary of his, of his findings, which he presented at the European Geosciences meeting in April. Based on computer simulations, Durante and his team surmised that two layers of one plate could be peeling apart, separated by a squishy middle layer that has become saturated with water in a process known as serpentinalization. This, it says, is enabling the two layers to separate, with one sliding under the other, forming what is known as, of course, a subduction zone, the region where two plates collide, with one dominating the other, sliding underneath it. The conclusions are mostly theoretical. As a potential result, the European continent could start edging toward North America, National Geographic reported, and of course it mentions that all of the continents used to be together, and then at some point they broke apart. That doesn't necessarily tie into our discussion with Fukushima as much as the fact that this is, as it continues to get worse, as we saw in 1969, could lead to even more earthquakes. And if that topples, there have been many people that said that this could very easily, that could very easily be an extinction event. It could be catastrophic <coughs> if the Fukushima plant was to fall into the ocean. And friends, that brings us to the Gumby of the day. I want to remind you, if you want to donate to my show, you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. I really could use the help there, uh, especially since... Um, these videos only get seen by those of you who are kind enough to share. I also want to give a shout out to anyone lucky enough to have their mother this Mother's Day. Make sure you uh, hold her tightly. I remember I used to think there would be a million Mother's Days when I was younger. And my mom died at the young age of 69. I was only 39. And um, you know, it stays with you. And of course, you know, I was thinking, uh, when I did the tectonic plate report that she would always use. She, when I asked her what tectonic plates were, I had just learned in the eighth grade, she said some kind of cooking where uh, I love my mom to death and uh, I miss her. And uh, again, I think, I think that's one of the reasons I wanted to open with the thing with Joe is uh, you know, some, I could disappear tomorrow and nobody would even know. But some people are authentically cared about. And I think sometimes people don't tell them that when they're around. So that's my reminder to everyone to make sure that you do. Cedar Point's opening today, and there's some people having a blast up there. I'm going to give a shout out to them on my feed here. All right, uh, Fukushima Town opens new local government building eight years after disaster. This is from the Manichi. It got the dumdy of the day because uh, we were told that they weren't exploiting homeless people and people that they just wanted rid of to do this cleanup. Here you go. Now, again, one of the reasons for this could be if you poison the homeless, they have access to health care, but they won't be draining the, the same existing systems that people with better health care have. I'm not familiar with every nuance in Japan, but I do know for sure that they have been using the least desirable people in their eyes, the, the allies of the elite, the least desirable people to clean this up because they're well aware of how toxic it is. They don't want to lose their best and brightest. They don't care about these people. Listen to this. The town government here resumed operations in a new building on May 7th, eight years and two months after the area was uh, evacuated in the wake of the nuclear disaster caused by the, of course, March 11th, Earth, March 2011 Earth, earthquake. The return of services comes at the evacuation order. So they have a new building there. They, they, they're, they're, they're proud of their, of their brand new building that they have in Fukushima. And they're calling it, well, you know, it, it's good for the rebuilding of Fukushima. No, the area is uninhabitable uninhabitable forever and lying about it in order to help the bottom line is simply not going to make it any less toxic. Also in the Manichi is a link talking directly 
in no uncertain terms that they're looking for homeless people to do this work. And we were told how many times that that wasn't going to be the case. Let me find the, uh, I had two links up for that. Let me, let me put this other link up there, particularly for those of you on screen share before we log off. Because so many people doubt the, the very sound science. I, I don't mind when people debate. I mind when people give me ridiculous science and ridiculous facts instead of the truth. Okay, I mind that a lot. Um, that's in, it's in Japanese, uh, but it is the Manichi here. I'll go to screen share, uh, for those of you who want to look it up. And, uh, so basically what I'm saying is this, we live in a world that's been dumber than any other time in history. We have a scientific experiment going on in Japan, basically a tiny little neutron star just burning away in Fukushima, releasing massive levels of radiation. And almost nobody notices. Nobody cares. We have science, we have cancers cropping up from God only knows what kinds of bizarre science, explosions, nuclear testings, um, radiological disasters from power plants, etc., etc. We have Causing cancers, science proving them. I, I'm showing you fundraisers from people that have the cancer. Somehow people don't see it. But there have to be, I, I would think, a few people in the world that still know how to think, to know how to use their brains. And if you're one of them, then help me in opposing all things nuclear. and Literally, things that are destroying the quality of life and Let's face it, life in general, breathing, ending lives every day. We've got to do something. Share the video. Get the information out. If someone wants to open a nuclear power plant where you live, camp there. Start an Occupy movement. Refuse to let them dig. If not, then this isn't going to change, friends. It's not going to change. Good night. God bless.